I woke up. And when I woke up, I found myself walking along the shore of the Potomac River. In the sand on the ground, there were lots of shells. Next to the beach, there were these great big cliffs. I spent all afternoon looking through the shells on the beach, looking and looking for something special. And I found some shark teeth. I was really excited about the shark teeth, and I imagined millions of years ago, lots and lots of sharks swimming around the Potomac River. So I kept wondering and thinking about the sharks, and as I did so, I realized these shark teeth are really cool, but I realized these are not the only cool things hanging out on the beach and observable on the cliffs of the Potomac River. In the water, there were logs from trees that had fallen off the cliffs as the cliffs eroded. In the water, there were also really cool rocks. I wasn't sure where these rocks had come from. And as I looked closely, it seemed like there were some curly things, maybe fossils, in the rocks. Maybe they also fell off the cliffs, as rainwater washed the dirt away and caused the cliffs to collapse. At the bottom of the cliffs were layers and layers of bivalves. Those are like clams or animals that live in a shell that have two parts. There were layers upon layers of bivalves in the lower parts of the cliffs. And then when I looked up, there were lots of twirly things that looked just like what I had seen in the rocks on the water. What were the twirly things in the rocks and how did they get there? After looking closely, I realized the twirly things looked like shells from an animal I'd seen before. That animal was a snail or a kind of gastropod. up in the cliffs there were lots of gastropods and low to the ground there were gastropods in the rocks so maybe the gastropods in the rocks had fallen off the side of the cliff so after my excursion I had found shark teeth on the beach gastropods stuck in the rocks in the water bivalves at the bottom of the cliff, and gastropods stuck in the land at the top of the cliff. And as I thought about everything I saw, I wondered how did the different types of fossils of the different animals get there, and how does the location of a fossil help a scientist know which animals lived in this area first, second, and third? Which ones were here the longest ago? and which ones may have been here more recently.